We're going to look at some wines for Christmas Day. Wines that you can have starting with an aperitif and ending with dessert on Christmas Day and a wine to match every course of Christmas lunch. We're going to start with fizz and this is a Prosecco from the Veneto in Italy and it's always great to get things going with bubbles right at the very beginning of the day. This is a drier style of Prosecco from Gieri Rizzardi and I'll get the pot going there. It's great with aperitifs because it's on the drier side. It can match salty, savoury snacks. It can match smoked salmon on brown bread as a nibble before lunch. Or indeed, it could actually go into some starters, such as goat's cheese, because the um, aromatic floral profile of the aromas and flavours in the wine and a touch of acidity matches nicely with the slightly chalky sweet character of goat's cheese. So, that's Rosard Prosecco and that's the first suggestion for aperitifs through to starters. You can always pour Christmas Day champagne but champagne tends to be obviously more expensive and Prosecco does the job sometimes if you've got a few guests around and you don't want to break the bank. It has notes of apple, notes of pear, slightly floral and the palette as I say is on the drier side. And then a lovely refreshing acidity. So perfect on its own are also food friendly. The second wine suggestion, which I'm suggesting that we take into starters. So vegetarian starters with patty with smoked salmon. Um, this is Marlborough Sauvignon from Ulster Love from Simon Waghorn and his family. And Marlborough Sauvignon tends to really be a very appealing wine style for lots of guests. It's highly aromatic, it's very fruity, there's lots of green fruit notes, there's slightly tomato leaf notes, very very exuberant on the nose and it tends to please lots of people but has absolutely deliciously crisp acidity which is perfect for starters. It can take you through to mains as well, it would be ideal with turkey, cuts through the richness of the gravy, goes with all the trimmings and it would even go with um, fish courses or creamier sauces because that delicious refreshing acidity is absolutely ideal as a food match. Mm. Long lingering fresh crisp acidity, so perfect for Christmas Day lunch. Moving on then, we're staying actually in um, the, on the other side of the world and this is a Margaret River Chardonnay from Bruce Dukes from his own vineyards. So a slightly richer style than the Sauvignon Blanc, not necessarily a hugely luscious creamy Chardonnay such as you would find in Burgundy. It's more of the shabby end of um, Australian Chardonnay so it has some elegance, it has some creaminess mid-palate but for someone who likes a, ri a richer, fuller style of white, then this is a good alternative on Christmas Day. Again, you can tr transition very easily from the Sauvignon to a richer white. Matches with creamy sauces, matches with, say, maybe richer roast dishes such as goose. And it's a real, um, the textural element of the wine and the fact that it's slightly richer makes it a really good main course wine for Christmas Day has a hint of citrus on the nose, a hint of exotic fruit that underpins that. And then it has a bit of texture and concentration. So a slightly more powerful white. Then moving on to the first of the reds and a lighter red first of all. This is a Pinot Noir Reserve from Chile. And this is from a um, technically cool climate area in Chile. The winemaker Viviana Navarrete is a real specialist in making Chardonnay and Pinot Noir and Pinot Noir is always a classic match for turkey and roast birds on Christmas Day. Chilean um, Pinot Noir is quite an accessible price point, it's very fresh, it has very good acidity and these vineyards are basically 
only four kilometers from the Pacific Ocean. So it's a really, really um, elegant, fresh, maritime influenced Pinot. So although it's from a warm country, it has very nice acidity and a very, very good aroma profile. The fact that it's near the Pacific means that you have foggy mornings, which means that the grapes don't get too much sun early on in the day. And then it has this beautiful cooling sea breeze, which keeps everything in the grapes fresh and elegant. So that's the lighter red is the Pinot Noir. So good with turkey, also good thing with, um, also good with beef and even vegetarian dishes such as a mushroom wellington or a nut roast, then the Pinot would be absolutely perfect. But sometimes in Christmas Day, there are lovers of bigger, fuller red wines, and this is a Rioja Gran Reserva. And again, you can just transition from the lighter Pinot to a heavier red. And this Rioja Gran Reserva from Bodegas Riojanas, it's a 2013 vintage, and Gran Reserva means that it has two years in oak and two years in bottle. So by the time the wine is released, it's actually ready to drink. So if you're interested in a bit of a richer, fuller red, and you're looking for something that's perfectly drinking on Christmas Day, then this Rioja um, Gran Reserva from the Davis Rioja Anis is a good option. It's actually a darker colour. You can see that immediately, the Pinot's lighter. The Rioja is a much darker colour on the nose. It's more concentrated. The fruits are very, very ripe. You can smell that it's going to be a bit of a fuller, a richer style of red. Got a touch of spice there on the nose, a hint of vanilla. And then on the palate, it's got lashings of delicious ripe fruit, but it's got hints of spice, a bit of tannin, so a bit of grip on the gums, and that makes it perfect for a richer, fuller dish on Christmas Day. It definitely would go with turkey, but if you're going to serve beef or lamb or a richer roast, then this uh, Rioja Gran Reserve is a perfect match. Moving on to cheeses, of course, you can make a transition very easily with your red wine if you serve the cheese course before the dessert course. And that's something that I love to see happening because you just make a lovely transition between the dessert and then into savoury cheeses. And the Rioja Gran Reserva would match really, really well with fantastic Irish blue cheeses. It would match with um, hard Irish cheeses and any, um, any sort of rich cheeses served with walnuts, served with dates, that type of thing. Then this would be a really, really good transition because the fruit is so ripe. So although the wine is dry, it matches very, very nicely with this touch of sweetness and also the saltiness of the cheese. Then moving on to dessert course, we have Bethany Late Harvest Riesling. This is from the Barossa Valley in Australia, and this is a, a pudding wine, if you like. Half bottle, which is nice, actually 50 cl, and I like to do my pudding wines in a cut crystal glass. The tinkling of the candlelight tends to make it, um, makes it a special occasion. Now this Riesling is a late harvest Riesling, which means the grapes have been left on the vines for um, an extended period of time at the end of the vintage, which basically means that those grapes are very ripe, they're a touch shriveled, and the juice that's left inside those grapes is very, very sweet because the sugar's been concentrated as the juice reduces in the grapes. Um, on the nose, it has a floral character, it's hints of butter toast, smells very rich and very full. Mm. And on the palate, it's got delicious ripe sweetness on the palate, but it has a fresh acidity as well, which is important for the balance in the wine. So I always think this is a really good option for Christmas Day desserts. Yes, absolutely, with things like Christmas pudding, but it would also be fantastic with tart to tan and even a chocolate based dish because of that delicious acidity on the finish that keeps the wine fresh then it tends to be a beautiful balance with the even very, very rich desserts. I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I hope you enjoy these wines and I hope you do enjoy them with some very, very interesting food matches. Experiment, have fun.